Good afternoon and welcome to this week's episode of Safety Culture Solutions, presented to you by Safety Culture Strategies. I'm Mike Kinney, your host. Each week, you've kind of heard my pitch by now. We had the pleasure of many movers and shakers in the world of safety culture, leadership, understanding training concepts, and psychological safety, all the important aspects that help you truly have a better trajectory for your ongoing safety culture journey. Today, I am really honored to have with us Mr. Jeff Bosole. He has been a friend of mine for many years professionally. He knew me when I, I think I had dark hair. So, so anybody in the world of Department of Energy, DOE, or the National Nuclear Security Administration, NNSA, has, has heard of Jeff, been around him. A little thumbnail of his resume, because i got to be candid. It could take a whole show to go through a lot of his accomplishments. Chief Operations Manager, Deputy Manager, Pantex Plant, Amarillo, Texas, and Y-12 Security Complex in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. He was Executive Manager for Sandia National Laboratories in Albuquerque and Los Alamos, New Mexico. Assistant Manager, Operational Support, DOE Idaho Operations Office, Idaho Falls, Idaho. Test and Refueling Engineer, Newport News Shipbuilding, Newport News, Virginia. He got his bachelor's in science and engineering with a focus on marine engineering, the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. His accomplishments are many and diverse. A few of my personal favorites. He developed the DOE Idaho Integrated Management System and the Quality Assurance Program and the FRAM, the Facility Responsibility Authorities Manual to improve implementation and performance, which resulted in them achieving ISO 9001 registration, which is no easy feat. He leveraged safety culture, bingo, safety culture capabilities and lessons across the Department of Energy and NSA sites and selected by DOE National Training Center to be the DOE field rep and instructor for pilot sessions of the Safety Conscious Work Environment, or SKIWI, for first line supervisors at Oak Ridge National Lab and at the Hanford site in Washington State. Jeff, welcome aboard today. And Haas, it is a pleasure, absolute pleasure to have you on the show. How are you doing? I, man, if I was any better, there'd be two of me, Mike. <laughs> and, and I think it's fair to say, and I don't want to offend anybody else, if you Google on Wikipedia the safety culture ski we dude and do we NSA, I'm pretty sure your name pops up because you've been at this uh, a while. I think so. Yes, sir. So, so as we kind of jump into the deep end of the pool, just for positive safety culture attributes, because you've been at so many sites and you've done this a long time. Well, one of your favorite phrases, ain't your first rodeo with this. So what are some great examples of positive safety culture attributes? Like when you walk into a facility or you're meeting with a like senior management team? Well, Mike, that's a, that's a great question. And I think there's gonna be five key attributes that I'd okay. focus in on. Um, and you and I have talked about these over the years. Mm -hmm. Accountability mm -hmm. starts off there. And in particular, leadership accountability. Um, and that's just not the boss or the CEO or the president or the general manager. That's everybody because everybody has a leadership role you got throughout it. In, in every day. So there's you got to have leadership accountability. Um, and it's more... I want to be held accountable for what I do. Yes. Not, I'm going to hold you accountable for what you did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Subtle difference there, but it's major difference. from a from a good safety culture standpoint. Yes, sir. People are willing to be held accountable because they're going to make the right decisions. Following that, um, I like to say you should see a complete disdain for, for and an intolerance of complacency. We've always done it that way before. <laughs> okay. And you get the same thing over and over again. Um, the idea that good enough isn't good enough should be part of the the way people think, behave, they act, they value those things. Um, uh, and because we all know that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same results and wondering why. So <laughs> you've, got, you've got to change yes. it. You can't have a place that, you know, we've got a hundred years of tradition unaffected by progress. <laughs> um, uh, a third one, you better have an insatiable appetite for improvement. Cool. Always want to be able to shave the time on it, the cost, uh, the shave the cost a little bit, 
we've got to be hungry for growth. We've got to be hungry for that, those opportunities. And that hunger is not just internal. It's got to really be pervasive throughout the organization. Absolutely. And individuals will want to feed that hunger also, you know, so that there's, you can continuously grow um, and be willing to learn. Mm -hmm. um, three powerful words. I don't know. Use them. Use them. Now, now, in fairness, some of our viewers, Jeff, is... For some leaders, isn't that rather difficult for them to have that intestinal fortitude to say, I'm, I really don't know. I don't have the answer. I don't know. Uh, it brings in humility, um, okay. which I, you, it, it is. It is very hard for somebody to say, I don't know, or I need help. Yes. Those, three, those two, three sets of words, and I wrote about them a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. um, in, a, in what I call a leadership share. Yes. But they are very, very powerful. And saying I don't know opens the door to learning. Somebody gets to teach the leader something, both okay. become smarter, and you build a key word, trust. Yes. Yes. Um, which is, a, which is um, I'll get to that in a little bit, but, um, but that is very, very powerful. There's got to be trust in the organization. Um, and the leader has to be trustworthy uh, and, and has to be open, take a chance and trust okay. his people to do the right thing. Okay, question for you. When you say trustworthy, what does that look like and how can you become a trustworthy leader? Oh man. Um, <laughs> the, well, first you got to trust your people. You've got to take a chance with them. You've got to, um, calculated gambles, I guess, if you want being in Las Vegas, you should be familiar with those. Um, that would be the gambling aspect of it. Yes. But, um, but you, People didn't get to where they are because they're adults. Um, uh, or most people didn't. Some got lucky. Uh, some have exceeded their Peter principle. We won't get into that. I think most <laughs> folks understand what that is. But but if you've got somebody who is a an expert, I mean, they are the best fill in the blank that you've got. Rely on them. Mm -hmm. Tr um, give them an opportunity to prove their value. Give them their that opportunity to shine and give them the credit for it. When you do that, the the that individual will look to the quote leader, you know, the um the boss, and, and realize like, wow, he trusted me to be the spokesperson. Cool. And that will turn around and you've got to do that. Um now, granted, you may have to do a little coaching or whatever, making sure. sure, you know, like I've took in all those certain words and left them in the garbage can for the day. So you don't have to beep out anything, which I'm known to do on occasion. No. But, but, but you've got to have that. And, and so that leads to one of my next um, attributes is you got to own your job. Yes. Own your job, own your responsibilities, own your, resp your role, right? And own it, own it such that... Um, because that builds on the other, the other, uh, the previous attributes I mentioned. Um, every one of us has to own our job, take Absolutely. pride in what you do, not being prideful, but take, be proud of what you do and know that when I'm done and I turn it over to the next step, whatever that may be, they can rely on the fact that I did my job. They, now they can do theirs. And you've got to know that they will own theirs so that you don't have to try to do their job for them in addition to it. So that that handoff works like this, mm -hmm. not like that. Very good. And there's no overlap and it further builds trust. Um, and I would say that the last one that kind of envelopes all those, those four is have a sustained unwavering conviction for performance excellence. You can call it flawless execution. You can call mm -hmm. it zero defects, whatever. Know that it is not possible, excellence, but you better be striving for it. It's, it's a, a journey. It's, yes. it's a journey, not a destination. And so um, when you think of it, that if I own my job and you own your job, oh, we yeah. own the results. And Absolutely we correct. celebrate the results together. And when we own those, it's a reflection of our standard and unwa unwavering conviction for 
performance excellence. Okay, so, pop, okay pop quiz for you. It's if you had one thing that a leader really needs to focus on probably daily to help sustain or get that their safety culture journey on the right trajectory, what would that one thing be that they probably, again, need to touch base every day? Awareness of try, T-R-I, dash, ing. Okay, Trying is an equation. Okay. The T is trust. Trust equals respect and integrity. Ooh, okay. And so if you're maintaining awareness of um, where you are on the respect um, spectrum, where you are on the integrity spectrum as the leader, and you are always striving to progress yourself on those two with all of your people, you will build trust with your people and they will trust you and you can trust them. And it, and it becomes a, um, a, a um, kind of a, a self-licking ice cream cone, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now, which is really appreciate the visual, Jeff. That was kind of cool. <laughs> but, but the, but having an awareness of those things of, sure. of trying, you know, and Good I point. say, you know, and I, um, I think that would be, that would be the, the most critical skill. Cause if you were awareness Good point. and you could fill in the blank, I use trying, but you could put a number of things in there. Where are you in uh, direct talk? Where are you mm -hmm. in a common language? Where are you in your um, goals or visions or missions, you know, visions or missions? <laughs> um, it's but, been a but long you, day. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, but that awareness. Wow. So but before we go to break, and you mentioned a few minutes ago, Jeff, I have been on your distribution, thank you so much, for your leadership shares when you were and still part of NSA since you've chosen to stand up your own company. You still prepare those. When you read them, it's you can tell it's not something you copied and pasted to, threw together in two or three minutes. What's some insight for our viewers? What triggered the leadership share and why do you choose to keep it going? In 2007, so we'll go back a few years, mm -hmm. a young lady who was the head of the safety committee at the Advanced Mixed Waste Treatment Project started sending out leadership articles mm -hmm. and she sent them to me. Um, and what she did was she would take a, an excerpt from an article or maybe the whole paper if it was short um, and send it out to people and make them think. And she led me down this path and I greatly appreciate it. I wish I could remember her name. It's been a long time. I don't believe she's still with the project there. Um, and I started sharing those uh, when I became the deputy manager at Pantex in 2008. And I've just continued that um, aspect. I've seen that there there are um, offshoots. There's been, there's one out of Los Alamos now that comes out. Um, uh, I'm forgetting the other the another place where they've been generated. But it, but it's just the the idea of hey, I I learned something from this. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe someone else can too. And so the um, and as of late, I've come to more make, making minor references to a portion of a book that I'm reading mm -hmm. or that I have read and give my perspective more than um, because it is can, now can be wholly mine. Before, when I was with uh, the federal government, the NNSA, mm -hmm. um, there are rules about sure. giving your opinion too much yes. versus, and so I would, I would limit it a little bit to just an introduction and some minor experiences and let folks read the article that somebody else wrote. Perfect. Now so, I'm more in favor of being self-generated. <laughs> so what's been the response from those amazing, because I think they're really cool as far as your leadership shares. So what's been the response from your readers? Um, uh, about every week I get at least one and there's a, 
oh, about 100, 150 now that are on the bang list mm -hmm. since I, I cannot send them to uh, DOE employees. Right. Used to have about 2,000 people on the list. Um, but the uh, thank you. This was perfect timing, perfect. just what I needed. Um, I've touched, you know, and, and if I don't get a response, I'm okay. Um, cause maybe the, the, you know, timing is everything and mm -hmm. somebody didn't have it, but maybe next week they'll remember it and go back go. and look, they saved it. Cool. Um, somebody has suggested that I put them all together and, uh, into a book. Um, thus my transition to self-generated ones, <laughs> um, whether I'll ever become an author or not, I don't know. I don't need the fanfare. I'm just trying to help. I'm a firm believer. So I think, you know, another critical skill with the awareness is to mm -hmm. serve as a leader. Perfect. If you want a strong safety culture, if you want a strong performance culture, if you want a strong organizational culture, the leader's got to serve. The leader has to be there to make his people, his or her people successful, Absolutely. make the mission successful. They've got to, um, you know, shy, basically shy away from the limelight. You know, sorry, yeah. I've got a Southwest facing window here and I can't <laughs> dim the light more. I'm in a light, but it's not lime colored. Um, there you go. The, well, you, so, you, yeah, you've heard the phrase too, Jeff, you know, servant leadership. Tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't go away. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We have a lot more coming up on this show, including some closing thoughts, a whole bunch of bullets that can really change your perspective on a positive safety culture. Stand by. We'll be right back. Safety Culture Strategies provides world-class safety culture and safety program management consultative services for clients throughout the United States. Whether your company is pursuing Voluntary Protection Program star designation, ISO 45001 certification, or considering a comprehensive review of your current safety programs and processes, Safety Culture Strategies brings hands-on experience combined with a unique perspective that readily translates from senior management to task level personnel. This collective skill set provides you with a very insightful health check of your overall safety management system that can also assist with reducing injuries and attrition, as well as increasing profitability. Safety Culture Strategies is also certified to provide Ziegler Institute employee engagement training and leadership coaching. When combined with established relationships with federal and state regulators, Safety Culture Strategies is unique positioned to assist the safety culture efforts of any company. For additional information, visit www.scstrat.com or call us at 702-780-1410. After all, every company has a safety culture, but is it the culture you want? Hey, and we're back. We've got Jeff Beausoleil with us, Beausoleil Enterprises, Big time player in the world of safety culture and, and what's called skiwi safety conscious work environment. So, Jeff, you and I have had the pleasure over the years working together, you know, sharing lunch. Now we each paid for our own tab for all the feds that might observe what's going on. So, from your perspective, is it possible to actually measure how effective a safety culture is, or is it more kind of organic in nature? You know, it's a little bit of, bit of both, but I okay. think you can measure it. Okay. Um, and there's a number of ways that you can do that. One of them is um, if you get a suggestion box or survey monkey or complaint box, whatever you may want to call it, um, what's the ratio of complaints versus suggestions for process improvements? And when that ratio starts to shift from the whining and griping about this, that, or the other thing or person or whatever. And you start getting, Hey, if we ever considered and watching them shift, okay. you can see, um, uh, it shows that you're making an impact with your safety culture because people are willing to share. They're willing to offer suggestions because they also know Perfect. you're willing to listen. There you go. There As the boss, you're willing to listen. I'll share from my personal experience. We have yes. a survey. We had 
I think it's still there. When I was the manager of the NSA production office, mm-hmm. uh, Survey Monkey open thing. When I first got there, on any given month, we would have all hands meetings on every every month, mm-hmm. mostly because there were three or four issues that were being raised through the Survey Monkey. We entered every single one of them, did a follow up on it. By the time we left, we got a. When I left after six years. Um, the issue, the rate, we ne- and there were zero suggestions. Um, well, there was a few, but I'm not, they're not ripe for public consumption. <laughs> um, but the, uh, but it shifted to, I know we've been doing this. Have we tried? Or wow. have you given any consideration to possibly something else? And then we didn't need that because people would just come by my office. Beautiful. They wouldn't hide behind an anonymous thing. They would be willing to come forward. They would go to the deputy. They would go to the assistant managers. They would go to their their first line supervisors and make suggestions. And and they would push the envelope and going like, perfect. Whoa, had never considered that, but okay, what's my legal sufficiency? What's my litigative risk? Sure. Let's let's take a chance. Let's go for it and be willing to fail. Be willing Beautiful. to fail. Beautiful. You know, and count those because a failure isn't a failure. Right. It's like, okay, we're not going to do that again. So we've learned and we can build on it. Um, the uh, And you can grow on it. Another one is to uh, a measuring. Um, if you're not generating the kind of results, is mm-hmm. you know, the first thing is uh, look in the mirror. As the leader, look mm-hmm. at yourself. Are you behaving? The way you expect the people in your organization to behave. Are you performing that way? Are you living and displaying the values of the organization? And if you aren't, reconsider either your position or change how you work or where you work. It's a choice. It's one of the it's, two. So, so for- it, it, very simple. It comes down to that. So I, I got to throw in a quick story because, again, Jeff and I go way back. I've had the pleasure over the years speaking in a lot of different conferences, IM, ISM sessions, safety culture, the list goes on. I believe I was in Idaho when, when you had ran a big, giant ISM workshop for about two or three days. And for the viewers, I'm known as the Mardi Gras bead guy. So I'm on stage, I'll have a bunch of beads. Hey, where are you from? Hey, good to meet you. And you get a set of beads. Everybody wants a set of beads. So at the last afternoon of the session, Ms. Bosley, you've been at this for about three months getting ready and you're running around with your hair on fire. And I got you on stage and I gave him a special set of beads. They had these little tiny ducks on them and they had this dark set of sunglasses. And I hand them to Jeff and he goes, really? And I said, well, this is recognition that you didn't duck your responsibilities and you didn't quack under pressure, which is the world's worst punt. About a year or so later, maybe 18 months, I have me back and I had helped him some causal analysis work. And Jeff, as always, hey man, stop by my office. I went in there and you had that set of modigree broad beads still hanging on, on your coat rack. I never forgot it. And when I left Idaho, I had a, um, I had a specially made, uh, um, cut metal and barn wood coat rack with a shelf on it. Um, had Ducks Unlimited right. kind of related things in the back, and those ducks sat on that for years. <laughs> and well, I still you. have them somewhere. <laughs> thank you. But again, actually, actually, I think they got passed on to a grandchild. It's okay. Well, I wouldn't. Well, th- th- that way you're kind of paying it forward. So I got to ask because we're gonna have a fun close this time. So everybody stay close. So I've been around a lot of people at your level, no offense, as you know, and you really, really embrace this premise of what it is to be a leader. Who kind of was your mentor that or influenced you with this amazing perspective on what it takes to be a leader? Well, uh, um, There, there are so many. There is. It was there only one. It's the, the cumulative effect of them. Okay. Um, but I would give, uh, um, sing. Uh, I would sing out the praise of um, Beth Sellers and Chris Ott. Yep. Um, Beth was manager at the Idaho Ops office, yep. who said, 
you know, you think you know this ISM stuff, we're going to host a conference, go for it. <laughs> let me run it. She, she let me do it. Chris was, Chris was my actual immediate supervisor, though cool. 98% of my stuff was directly in support of the manager. Mm -hmm. um, and Chris gave me a line to think about is that our processes, not our people, should be the control point. And the at that time, uh, and this was as we were trying to st ramp up to get the, the ISO 9000 registration, mm -hmm. um, we didn't have a process to save our life. We relied on people skills and whatnot. And, yeah. you know, and, and it didn't work. But what I've learned as I've taken what both Chris and Beth taught me um, was that, yes, you need the processes. And you need the people. And you need the people to implement the processes, but not blindly. They've got to do it with thought. And you have to create that environment to allow the people to follow the process, but challenge it if it doesn't make sense, exempt it if it shouldn't be. Um, matter of fact, that my, when I first met uh, Miss Lisa, Lisa Gordon Hagg told her that I was a little bit rogue. <laughs> um, and she, she, she said, excuse me. And I said, well, um, there isn't an or I said, I, I, I don't like bureaucracy. It gets right. in the way. She goes, me neither. Um, I said, uh, and there isn't a requirement that I won't fight challenge, uh, to waive exempt or find an equivalency to, if it is not supporting our ability to safely, effectively, securely, and with high quality deliver on the mission. Perfect. She said, you and I are going to get along just fine. Cool. <laughs> and so it, it, it's and, and I think that comes from what Beth and Chris did for me yeah. um, as I as I got into my truly formative leadership development years and moving up in the organization. Yes, sir. They took a chance with me. Um, I don't think they ever regretted it. <laughs> no, I, I don't um, think so. And, and I and I greatly respect them for it. And uh, I thank them pretty much every day. Okay, but before we get to the close couple of key questions. Exactly what is Bosal Enterprises about? And more importantly, how can people get a hold of you, Jeff? Um, well, Bosal Enterprises is um, leadership management um, organization, ex executive consulting, mm -hmm. advice, counsel, support. Um, I'll do almost anything for a dime. Uh, <laughs> Almost. Almost. Um, but but I want to take um, the my experience in moving organizations forward, um, moving people forward, moving teams forward. Perfect. Um, and, and growing in their capabilities to deliver on the on what their stated objectives are, their mission. Excellent. Uh, and coach, guide, mentor. Uh, I'm not a, um, an official coach, uh, but um, teach if necessary. Somebody, I said, I'm not a teacher. And they said, you've been teaching since the day you started walking. So pretty much. Um, and, and maybe that's true. Um, but uh, helping organizations achieve their unrealized capabilities. Excellent. So what's a good way for them to get a hold of you? Uh, email is uh, all lowercase g b e a u s one nine eight one at gmail dot com. Okay, and my phone number is two zero eight six zero four one eight nine zero. Perfect. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're towards the end of the show. And usually, if you've been around me long, you know, hey, I talk about, well, you've been on stage and people want your autographs. What's well, two or three things? We're going to do something different this week because with Mr. Bosley, it can't be just two or three. And he's got this figured out. So, Rick, if you can help us, can you pull that up for us? And, Jeff, could you kind of walk us through your thoughts on Jeff's leadership philosophy, sort of, quote, unquote? production office six and a half years ago, somebody said, well, what's your leadership philosophy? And it was like, oh, hell, I don't know. Um, and, and I pulled something that uh, somebody had used their last name for something and it was much soft, sh shorter name. And 
and I started to think a little bit. And in about 30 minutes, I pulled this together. And, and, and so as you see in the, the bold letters going down, spells out Beausoleil. Don't worry about the first L. I had to figure something out there. But, um, but I just thought, first off, you got to believe in yourself. If you can't, it, as a leader, if you don't believe you can lead, no one will, right? Um, look at it as effectiveness. It's a value in our performance and our decisions, and it results in compliance. And the idea is there, you can be compliant, but not effective. But if you're effective, you will be compliant. Because if you're not compliant, your effectiveness just went in the toilet, right? Adaptability, flexibility, adjust, you know, um, being that having the ability to adjust on the fly um, with thought uh, conscientiously really helps. Understand your obligations, your commits, and your customer expectations, because if you don't, how can you deliver? Uh, the sum of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. That's the team. Everybody's valued. Everybody is needed. Everybody's there. You can't just have a pitcher. You got to have a catcher, a first baseman, work your way around the diamond. Um, uh, openness, because not being open hurts everybody. You've got to share information. You got to seek information. You got to you got to move on on it. Okay, the first alignment um, internally, externally so that you don't get uh, opposing forces, you don't lose collaboration, um, you build collaboration, you build cohesiveness there, enable all to be successful, uh, create, create that environment for all to be successful, invest in yourself and your staff and your organization and in your future, and that your future is the individual as well as the organization's future. Because if you don't invest in your, in your people, for example, Somebody else will, um, and you'll lose them. And then lead, and we are all leaders. Even if it's leading my way to the uh, get out of bed in the morning to go to work, um, that's a leadership choice. Um, we are all leaders, even and the best are those who don't know it, but behave that way, and don't look for the glory. So that was. That's excellent. And I've, you know, I've used the phrase before, quiet champions. Well, Jeff, we cannot thank you enough for being on the show. To all my viewers, if you're interested at all on ways to enhance your trajectory, tweak your management team, you really need to contact the folks there, especially Jeff, Bosley Enterprises. I guarantee they can make a difference for it. Jeff, thank you again for being on the show. As always, it is great to chat with you and having you share some of your leadership's leadership thoughts today was phenomenal oh thank you mike i appreciate the offer and you know um i'd be glad to come back any other t sometime in the future and chat about related topics other elements or whatever or if any of your your listeners you know shoot you a note saying hey i didn't catch jeff's email gbos at gbos 1981 <laughs> at gmail.com um Pass it on and, and, and we'll work. And if uh, folks want to, would like to see the leadership shares, um, send a personal if you're a federal employee or business address if you're not, um, either directly to, my, to me or via Mike, and I'll add you on there. Excellent. Well, thank you again. You have a great weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, that includes this week's episode of Safety Culture Solutions. And people say, well, Mike, we knew we were talking about Jeff. How can we get a hold of you? Well, thank you for asking. King of Segway. You can find me on my website, www.scstrat.com. Or you can send me an email. I can make it really easy, especially for my little gerbil safety weenie brain, Mike at scstrat.com. You can call my office at 702-780-1410. Until next time, and enjoy your safety journey. The trajectory can prove amazing. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye for now.